Okay, so let's just start at the very beginning, okay? Make it simple, make it easy. Uh, we're going to go through our basic A. We'll do our circles, our basic plan. And by the end of the hour, you want to feel better, of course, which remind yourself deeply that the only way you can mess this up is by trying too hard. So just start with me doing the easy circles in the shoulder. However large, whatever you consider to be 100% of your shoulder rotation, make sure you're doing about three quarters of that. Actually, literally in the Taoist writings, they say 70%, right? So even a little shy of three quarters. Good. Hey, Mila. Good girl. Good. This is another convenient dog petting motion here. You can but this is what should happen is my elbow and hand follow the rotation of my shoulder and you immediately are massaging a good third of your body if you do it correctly with the dog as a bonus, right? The dog gets the massage also, right? So this swimming motion through the shoulder, I want to set the tone. This is what I, one thing I want you to learn today and it's not only for this session, it's how to go through life if you can keep moving forward but at three-quarter power. And then we learn in Qigong also when you stop to let everything really relax. So when we're active, we're at three-quarter power. And when we stop, we learn to let go, relax, release. So even at night, you'll sleep better. So how you do business, how you go through the day is what we're trying to adjust in the Qigong session. Not just to do it and then go around a day like this. No. Make, make the transition. What we add next is the breathing. Remember the three major factors, the posture, the breathing, focus of mind. So when you focus on shoulder and harmonize it with rising and exhale, take it down, you are putting mind and body on the same page. Just don't overdo it. Don't sneak into 80%, 90%, and every American will, because we've been conditioned through marketing and capitalism, frankly, to Give 110%. So we're not doing that. Mila's a good Qigong teacher. I watched Mila go through her day. It's not um, unnecessarily stressful. Let's put it that way. So I think we can all learn something from that. Yes, you see how the breath is good. Now just let the hands come down here. Rest the elbow. Release, release the shoulder. Release internally. Drop the chin, move the head back. Do some wrapping here actually. Bring those arms around instead of having them on the thigh for a moment. Just like you're wrapping a blanket on yourself, chest soft, descending, shoulder blades opening, shoulder blades and shoulders dropping. Now put the hands, right? Good. Uh, chin drops, move the head back slightly, float it upwards so you feel elongation through the neck, and if you do it correctly, if you're not leaning forward or back, and you've tucked your tailbone and straightened that lower back, you can feel the entire spine lengthening from top to bottom, gradually, gently, but definitively. Then, at this point, about three inches below the belly button, start to rotate, gently. The same way you did the shoulders, rotate here. So it's what we're doing, and more importantly, it's how we're doing it. 70% of what's available. Slow. The way to keep it slow is match your motion to your breath. I like to exhale coming forward. Inhale rolling back. Doesn't matter, you can do it either way. Just don't let me find out about it. No, I mean, do it do whichever way you want, right? It's no <laughs> you will find schools of Qigong and you will find uh, certain governments and even some churches, you know, there's only one way to do it. Qigong has individual variation. It has to because we're all different. I'll say this. If someone can't recognize that you're doing Qigong, then you might want to clean up your act a little bit, right? There's limits to individual variation. But, uh, yeah, you know, slow, moderate, attenuating the posture, right? Uh, let's go upstairs. Uh, circle the head. Reverse. 
So most of the time, people start at the top and the neck and work down, or they start at the bottom and work their way up, just so they don't forget anything, right? Go to the turtle. This is gentle rising and falling. And I'm just kind of jumping around a little. Um, it's a tone for my day. I feel a little scattered today. So I'm taking extra care to slow down and do the Qigong in a very mindful fashion. Good. And we did some shoulder, we rolled through the hip. Let's turn to the right, extend the left leg. Knee slightly bent, I pull the toes back. Gonna rotate at the top of the feet we're earning. There you go, way up here. Sitting on the right side, because my left leg's extended, I can feel this area decompress and I can feel the tide coming and going there, squeezing, not only the muscle, but the lymph nodes there, and releasing. So excellent for your immune system, blood circulation, nerve stimulation, finding, how, noticing how much tension you're storing, all these things. Then match it to your breath. Inhale one way, exhale the other. You want to get as many systems in the sense of the body correlating, overlaying, harmonizing as possible. That's why we don't watch TV or look out the window or talk on the phone when we're doing Qigong because if your mind's not in the game, you're not doing Qigong. So how do we bring the mind deeper? Uh, go to the other side. Not that there's anything special about the other side, it's just time to change. I'm sitting on my left side, right leg extended, knee slightly bent, pull the toes back moving at the top of the femur, not holding the breath. Inhale one way, exhale the other. You see, I just pulled my leg back a little because it felt overextended and tight. You know, I have this kind of feeling. So make it easier, right? Make it easier. Get it done, make it easy. So how do you go deeper with the mind? Well, I very, very decisively, once I get over here and feel like I'm running out of room, I change my mind and I decide to go back the other way. And I put my mind almost on the tip of that big toe, really, and lead over. And as I feel this tightening, I know I'm running out of room. I change my mind. I go into the tip of the little toe and I lead with my mind going back. Same way you may drive a car, have your mind out in front of the car a little bit, right? You know before you turn left that you're going to turn left. You kind of have the mind in the game. I say I hope you drive that way because I see a lot of people do not drive that way. Good. I don't know the statistics, but I bet money right now, probably one of the number one Top three reasons people give, you know, for the real reasons for having an accident in a hurry, going too fast. So if you go three quarters, <laughs> you know, slow it down. Three quarters of your ability to handle the situation. Going, going into the knee now, see, so it's scalable. You have to scale it. So I'm going to, I don't know why I'm trying to take my sandals off. We'll leave the sandals on. Uh, again, I'm sitting on the right side a little bit and raising the left knee. Finer point in the Qigong, I want to feel as the weight goes to the right side and I relax it down. It's almost a teeter-totter effect, raising that left knee. Good. And then let it relax. I'm not using my hands today to hoist it so these muscles are tight. I try to let the knee relax. And when you feel this separate and open a little bit, start doing a circle inside the knee. The foot will follow that rotation so your mind is here. Energy here. Change direction. Don't hold your breath. Good. So my knee just popped a little bit. Almost like the bone, a little popping noise in there. See? Decompressed. Now it's lubricating. Go the other way. Decompressing, relaxing, hydrating, right? Even the cartilage, a lack of pressure can moisten a little bit. There you go. Set her down. Shift my weight. Again, that teeter-totter effect. A descent on this side, causing a rising on that side. You'll thank me later when you get into the standing version of the Qigong. One of which is Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a standing Qigong. 
It's different than other Qigongs because it's all, also a martial art. And yes, it is an actual, super effective martial art. If it wasn't, I'd be missing a lot more than one two. You see what I'm saying? No. Uh, one's not bad. <clears throat> Very good. Let's go into the left ankle, both the wrists flexing. Now here's a great place to kind of think up, look with your eyes, in other words, engage the nervous system and then go up. Change your mind, look with the eyeball down, feel the nerves, send that message. So the body is following the mind. The mind is moving the energy, the body responds. Switch it to circles, just inscribe one circle with your eyes and follow that on one side of the body, reverse. When you actually look with your eyes, you're sending energy, you're moving energy. If you visualize in your mind, um, you may or may not be moving energy. Uh, so be careful. So in the Qigong, we're very clear about getting the mind to come here and flow upwards and feel the energy following the mind. You don't imagine it in your head. You're doing it. You're sending your mind full out, out into the extremities, and it's changing, moving, and the energy is following it, and the body is following the energy, so to speak. That's how the universe gets it done. Do it that way. Anything else is mindless. could be just mindless repetition. Very low mind quality, very low energy quality. So your consciousness, your awareness is really kind of the secret workout at the root of all of all Qigong. All right, I think we got a lot of the joints in a circular manner. We want a feeling of openness, decompression, vitality, circulation, warmth, lightness in the joint, because that's where the energy pumping stations are, you see? So... Uh, Joint problems through arthritis or injury or a whole host of other things can hit you physically real hard, but also over time you'll notice things like depression and different more subtle negative effects showing up. That's because it impedes the energy flow uh, just as much as, as the blood flow or the uh, range of motion and stuff like that. Uh, Western medicine doesn't really look at that yet, so my advice, uh, take the best of the West and put it with the time-tested stuff from the East, put it together. It's actually a great time to be alive and do that. And uh, especially now when you're locked up, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, had a, I just had a flashback to the last election where everybody's yelling, lock her up, lock her up, and it's like, Karma can be very quick sometimes, so careful what you wish for. It might happen to you. It might happen to you. Uh, and I said they'd never get me locked up, and here I am. So, woo. All right, my friends. So uh, with that in mind, the opening of the joints, right? How you do it. That's what I want you to go home with today. Uh, well, you're already home, but that's what I want you to keep alive after we say goodbye. Is this feeling of moving moderately, the joints decompressing, opening, and then relaxing and closing. The spine, for example, right now, lengthening. <coughs> Actually, we're working on the lung for this first one. Rotate, go behind, inhale, come up, back to the hands on the spine. Hold the breath, squeeze, you're going after the back of the lung. So invade that upper back area, invade that with your mind. Now drop your mind into the lower abdomen, large intestine area. Lean forward, squeeze that area, holding the mind there. Exhale, come back. Try to feel it come alive because it's sensitizing because your mind is ensconced there now. You're putting your mind there now. You can feel its presence. So you're training your intention. You're training your concentration, your focus. 
along with your fluidity, your malleability, right? Your ability to change flow. What happens when you run out of room? You change, change, change. So we want to become adept at managing change. And if you're piloting a boat down the river, I would tell you the same thing. Keep it at three quarter power. Try to stay in the middle. <laughs> I might have a good result. Chest sinking, shoulder blades separating. Make sure you're reaching down. Don't pull the shoulders up. Now, tuck tailbone, drop chin. The shoulders almost automatically start to rise. Not too high. Exhale down. Rotate. Sneak behind. Come up. Those shoulders down and elbows down as you reach forward. Put your attention and work and change here in the lower abdomen. Good. One more. So we're going quiet here now so your mind can relax and you can just feel the flow and try and let the chatter in your head calm down, stop, just attenuate to what you're doing, what you're feeling. Be soft about it and very languid about it and feel things that are pleasant opening up and relaxing the feeling you get from that is different maybe than how you've been going through the day especially if you haven't done your qigong in a few days so don't do you feel that change right see this itself is what we're going for you know yeah if you feel the need to Get like this and carry around ovens all day. Go ahead. But at the end of the day, it's always ouch, ouch. And um, yeah, we worked with a lot of older folks, you know, and uh, the sins of our youth. <laughs> Qigong can cancel them out for you. You don't have to suffer those things, maybe that you did to your joints and muscles when you were playing tennis, you know. And, uh, you can get rid of all that. But make sure it's a gentle process, otherwise you're kidding yourself. Wrapping here now, right? Wrapping is chest coming in, shoulder blades separating, chin dropping, tailbone tucking. So literally I want this tailbone feeling coming under to help straighten the lower back. Chin dropping, you see I sit down, that's that tucking of the tailbone. So the lower back rounds, or straightens rather, the whole spine has a rounding feeling to it. It's really just lengthening. It's just that you're probably taking that curve out of lower back and the head not too far forward now. Chin not up. So as best you can. Now just roll to one side. I'm going to the left side where the fist is. All my weight's on the left side. I turn and let this open and then tip at the waist. Watch out for the tendency to untuck your tailbone and put a lot of pressure on the lower back. 
Lower back should feel very relaxed, the spine very supple. If it gets tense at all, you're probably arching, dipping in that lower back. And probably one of the culprits is when you extend your arm, you might automatically pull your shoulders back and, and stick your tailbone out. So make sure you're wrapping. Can you feel the difference when you stop and fix the wrapping? It's a whole different animal. And someone just has to stop you and remind you, and as you do it more and more, you'll choose this position because it feels better and easier. Yeah. And honestly, it's kind of fun. It gives a feeling of empowerment to change it right before your eyes and learn a different posture shape, in other words and play with that through the day after class. Now we don't want any feeling of um, loading up or you know working hard and, uh, and then, uh, you know none of that. Um, none of that. Yes, teacher. Okay, yeah, yes. I will tell you from experience, Qigong, Tai Chi, <laughs> if you're lucky, if you really push on it, you know, uh, it can be a very humbling experience when you're forced to uh, demote your ego and uh, acknowledge your mistakes and change, you know, and soften because... Just be like water, as much as you can. Why? Because that's your number one ingredient. So be true to yourself. That's as simple as that. And like water, you know, we're born in one state of being and we change a lot as we go through life. And then one day we won't even be here. So water is always flowing, changing from Solid to ice, back to water to gas. Always changing, always fluid. That's good. Doesn't that feel better, right? Easier. And I just I want to remind you now because sometimes you switch out of doing it too hard and you kind of miss the fact that it feels better to do it easy. And the 110% idea is so deeply ingrained in everyone. I gotta pause and say, don't you like that better? And everyone does, you know. And good news, the people that don't like it better, they're free to... And there's... You'll notice a lot of people choosing that on a daily basis. So, hey, make your choice. That's fine. This one we call the gorilla. So I'm very much tucking tailbone, dropping chin, rounding, at least straightening through the spine. Straightening is best. I don't know how to. There's nuances here we don't want to get into. The, the key is just not the arching in the back and pulling of the shoulders. I'm sitting down, tucking tailbone, dropping chin, rounding this way. This is how it's done standing up. You can see that the back. Spine, the spine rather lengthens nice, and there's just no disjointed breaking into pieces. So that's the main thrust. Just keep that alive, and you're more than halfway home with this exercise. Coming out of the intestine through the heart opening. When I come down here, I'm going to feel a little squeezing. Chest sinks in, arms rotate, gently massaging into the heart, compressing, squeezing on the <clears throat> small intestine, lengthening. Good, there you go, nice, fluid, easy. Like you're gonna swim from here to China, right? Just take your time, can't be in a hurry. And the breath is your guide. So I'm exhaling, inhaling, pushing from the ground with the feet, activating as best I can, ankle, knee, hip, joints. 
just releasing downward, I got to take it through the hip, into the legs, all the way down. Now I push from the ground and try to lengthen the fascia, open the joints, pull on the tendons. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo, getting in there. Exhale, finishing. Inhale, commencing. Good, good, good. Yeah. One good thing about not doing your Qigong for a few days, when you get back to doing it, you're like, wow, this feels good. And it should feel good as you're doing it, and you should be able to take the good feeling with you through the day, even sleep better at night, if you do it the way we recommend. Watch out, because the temptation's always there to work it too hard and chase, chase other animals. What we're looking for is, again, Rolling all the way down the left side as I turn right, open, expanding, lengthening the spine up and down as I come out laterally, and then exhale, come back to the center. Shift, keeping the alignment of the spine, rotate on that spine, come out, exhale. Just a, a feeling of a balloon, every aspect expanding in every direction. Everything contracting back to the center. Think of the center as the area just below the belly button, about three inches south of the belly button. Come here. pendulum of a clock, just not really stopping, coming through center, going to the other side, very equal, very patient. I lifted my chin, I stuck out my tailbone, I'm going to round again, wrap again, do a couple more. Always leave it on a good note before you transition into the next one, feel like you've accomplished Right? The stimulation, the release. Uh, I believe we're into washing the hair. Does that sound familiar? Uh, wow, it's flowing by nicely. Uh, opening, parallel feet, knee on top. Now, you can open here to facilitate this folding at the quad. So just put both hands right here on the thigh fold and feel the abdomen squeezing on one side and the top of the thigh on the other. Keep your chin down, tailbone tucked. When you come back, push with your legs. Good. Now we extend our arms and you should feel as you rotate elbows down, palms up, a leveraging or tension slightly building right here. And that's the area we want to work is, is the uh, liver gallbladder on this one. So inhale now and start a flow of energy into your eye. Just take your awareness into the eye, down the optic nerve. Continue to the back of the head. Circle here. As you come out, you'll feel that leveraging effect start to manifest right across here because the arms are out. So you feel this pressurized. Now just inhale and squeeze on that area as you come down. Then rotate, shoulder blade. Shoulder, armpit, come in. Again, let the entire arm, including the shoulder blade and the upper back, be changing here. Let's do this. Let's, let's have an inhale here. Exhale. And just exhale all the way down. Now inhale into the lower abdomen and come up. And you don't have to go as large as I'm going, right? This is completely enough to get the job done right here. If you become more adept at it, you can make a smaller move than that and accomplish the compression and decompression in that area. It could be very small. So long as this area is the star of the show. 
Now, feel free to go 70% on what's comfy for you. See, I'm not going all the way down. Yeah, and back up. So this is very much like our other Qigong that God's playing in the clouds Qigong. You can feel the effects of the arms out here on the inner glands and organs. Phasia, tendons, ligaments, everything. Now, for some reason today, my breath is reversing itself. You know, I'm inhaling on the way down. So, yes, to answer any questions, you can do that. I'm inhaling here. Which adds a lot of pressure into that lower abdomen area, midriff, see? So play with it. You should be able to do it both ways. Trust me, <clears throat> do it both ways, do it gentle, play with it, because you'll find, again, schools that insist it has to be only this way, has to be only that way. Come on, you got to get past that at some point in time. So do it do it with your Qigong. The story, the short version, is, is basically the school I started with, they have you do all your warm-up stuff relaxing from the top down. And then I went to another high quality uh, class visited and they insisted that you must start from the bottom and do the joints and come to the top. And I swear, if either one of these people got in a park with each other, they would have fought it out, you know? So, watch out for that trap. It's everywhere. Exactly. Yeah, to, you know, well, hey, I'll tell you who's going to prevail is the one that can do both, right? Either one. So get that going, right? Come over here. Because you never know which tool is going to be the right one at any particular time. So people love shifting into dogmatic expressions of good ideas, you know. And they, pretty soon they're cutting their hair weird or not cutting it, you know. Or wearing a weird hat or not wearing hats, you know. If, if any of that matters, I'm in big trouble. I'll just say that. Right there. So opening here. And closing right there in the quad. Just as I tip over here and have no weight on the side, you can see here, this is the feeling of this expansion from that hip area up through here and then coming back. So it's hard for people to get in that position. And remember, the original version of this was, you know, standing on one leg with wobbly sandals, right? And so you can see that area opening Right at the center of the body, down the leg, out the arm, and then coming back. You can do that version too, but let's face it, you know, for most of us, we're gonna get a lot of benefit with a low risk factor going here. And it gives you something to shoot for, you know. Don't explode this one now. Just a nice languid journey to the top and a cycling back down. Just make the top feel like the bottom. Don't make the top feel like Mount Everest here. Just Nice and easy, nice and easy. It's the opening and closing. It's the control. It's the relaxation that lets the energy move. See, in the West, they're more, you know, hitting the muscles hard to get the blood moved. That has effects, of course. That often retards the flow of energy, especially as you get older. And you get some injuries piling up. So this process can reverse injuries. This can do the cleanup work that the Western medicine doesn't really do well with, you know. You know, the Western medicine, you believe me, they send you to physical therapy for six to eight weeks. And then in their mind, that's as good as you're going to get. It's over as far as they're concerned. But you know it's not very good, so you keep trying to fix it, and then sadly people just go into running and weights and torturing the area, rather than learning to change the movement pattern. We talked about that. Change the posture, big part of that. Change how you do business, this 70% rule. And then start balancing things.
And I guess it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, any, any remember the Twin Towers in New York? Remember those? Remember when that guy strung the wire across the Twin Towers and then walked across the wire? See, that kind of stuff impresses me a lot more than somebody that can bench press, you know, 400 pounds. It, it, I just, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. It's, it's more impressive. And on that note, we'll do number eight, right? <sighs> Coming here. Chest soft, chin drops, tuck tail. So I got a small image on you there. Uh, is that relaxed in the shoulders? I don't think it is. Oh, good. Yeah. Now we're just going to melt. Drop your chin. Make sure that tailbone stays tucked. So it's almost like your head's a boulder rolling down, just straight down between the legs to the ground. You'll actually look at the floor, and you'll feel the chin on the chest, neck relaxing, tailbone tucks just a little bit more as you go down, right? Make sure you disperse that energy evenly through the spine, and come back. Good. Inhale on the way down this time. So inhale as you're releasing, so you pressurize and expand internally. And over time, you'll be able to pull, gently pull those vertebrae apart with that internal pressure and expansion due to the breath. So it's almost like we're making the container a little smaller with this melting, and then we inhale and increase the pressure of that smaller container. If you stay relaxed, your body will compensate by letting the joints pull apart a little bit. Almost like the skin of a balloon, everything expanding, Simultaneously and then relax and everything, everything. That feels pretty even now. When I started this undulation side to side, one side felt a lot tighter than the other. Now they feel both pretty fluid, see? So you're always looking for things like that in your session to balance out. Uh, sink your chi now. So check your posture, line up your feet, sitting square on the chair, tucking tailbone, dropping chin, wrapping. And then pause here a moment to make sure you're not leaning back. So what I do is I just lean back too far and notice what that feels like. And I come forward until that feeling goes away. In the center here, I can relax and just, when I do relax, I feel like I just settle down. Lean forward too much. For those of you that lean forward too much, you'll feel tightening in the body here and there. And then just return, find the center. That's where you can relax and feel your burden traveling down. Cooperating with gravity through alignment and managing alignment through mental awareness and intention. Once you find or at least improve your connection to the center, go into breathing low in the abdomen. Try to feel this chamber number one, the belly, expanding as you inhale, contracting as you exhale. Chamber two, uh, I'll leave one hand here on chamber one. I'll take what's called the tiger's mouth right here, and I'll just put it right on the back side here, of the top of the hip, between the rib and the hip, that soft area. We'll call that chamber two, and I want to feel that expand with air eventually and pressure as I inhale. And that's going to be trickier than getting chamber one to respond. Same advantage will apply. You'll be able to actually pull open the lower back vertebrae as that pressure comes and goes between chamber one and two. It is crucial not to strain in any way when you're practicing the breathing techniques. You must do it in a relaxed 70% manner. If you screw it up and work too hard and wake up in the middle of the night flush with anxiety, I mean, 
that's how you make people feel. <laughs> so realize that it's uh, coming from you, right? Just you know, let it go. Remember, you're not only practicing breathing, you're practicing letting go of the other habits. So it's tricky. Chamber three is just simply expanding. I say simply, but it's quite profound. The area between the shoulder blades as you inhale. So I'll turn around here and you can see chamber one and two expanding. And then where the wrinkles are in my shirt there between the shoulder blades as I inhale, pressure will come up the spine and open that area. So you'll see the shoulder blades actually separating like this, rotating as this area here starts to expand. And when you first discover that or rediscover that, it's a wonderful secret feeling like, oh, there's a secret space I can breathe into back there. It's usually just been squeezed with tension, shut. So if you can start getting into the chamber one, two, and three breathing, you're moving along real well. Keep it up, keep it going. Good. So this is God's playing in the clouds, Qigong, remember. Uh, it's easy to get these things confused with one another. So this motion, you're going to see my tailbone tuck. I'm sitting down. So tailbone rotates under, lower back straightens. I'm leaving my hands down at the side, <clears throat> but I'm going to rotate like that. My thumb will wind up pointing at me. Yeah. So that the shoulder blades pull apart, and I feel the chest coming in. So then, therefore, with sitting down, remember the knee doesn't advance, this feeling. So whether you're seated or standing, this has to happen. Then lengthening upwards at C7 a little bit, right? And hands go here. So this is gonna be the rising motion. And the hands are gonna start at the side of the body. And where they're gonna to migrate to is kind of on a line, they're gonna come up right in front of the bird's nest. Right. So here's the bird's nest, right? This chest coming in causes softness here. Right? So that's coming in. The elbow is down. So bend your elbow and see if it's sticking out or if it's generally pointing down. A little bit out's okay. But this is forbidden. Okay? We don't want that at all, right? So I always I just think of an icicle, you know, um, just bending there and there's the the little drip off of here. So if the drip was coming off your elbow and hitting your knee or thigh, that'd be fantastic. But, you know, human variation, it might be out here a little bit. That's fine. So the hand's going to travel from this position, just a little inwardness because this is sinking in, the chest getting soft, and the shoulder blades moving away from the spine. You feel that? Yeah. This is what this is the problem area for so many people, not just pulling the shoulder up, but they pull it back, and you can see it squeeze here. So this has to open, that this coming around opens that, and then elbow dropping lets it all relax. Good. And if you miss it by an inch, you miss it by a mile, quite frankly, you know, in my opinion, you know. Now, don't be just don't be distressed because missing it by a mile is not as bad as missing it by a hundred miles, right? So uh, my point is simply this, yeah, if you're close, that's good, but uh, don't ever give up and, and stop trying to perfect it, because you'll, you'll feel the difference. So that motion right there, and really it feels like it's, for standing, and I want to be clear about this, um, you're adapting for sitting, so I want to tell you exactly what I'm going for for standing, so you know that you're not... And to your best of your ability, you're going to include all this even though you're sitting, okay? I worry that if sometimes I go into sitting mode that I'm lowering the bar too much, right? <clears throat> so I just want you to understand the classic full body standing methodology that will improve your seated adaption for sure, right? Because you know how it is. Remember the old game where you whisper something into somebody's ear and then they whisper in the next guy's ear and it goes in. And if I start you out with just a pure sitting version, I'm worried that we're already starting 90% behind. You know, and it's going to get distorted more as we go. Also, I'm still dangling this carrot out here known as standing. There's your carrot. Can you see your carrot? 
Catch the carrot. There you go. So <clears throat> that's what's that's what's. <laughs> but you know what's weird? Uh, when I went to China uh, and was training over there, uh, I didn't, I trained a lot, but um, not as much as I wanted. And when I came back. My teacher at the time, uh, Master Yan, said, wow, you know, you really improved a lot. And I had trained a lot, but not as much as I wanted. So I told him, hey, I didn't train as much as I want. And he says, yeah, but you were thinking about it all the time, weren't you? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so how much we put our mind into this, the level of quality we look for is, any questions about quality versus crap? I mean, this is just, this is it. Don't be, don't be fooled by my clo don't be fooled by my clothing or my expensive haircut. You know this is high quality qigong. We don't do anything else. So talking temple and dropping chin, the feeling of a sitting downness. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing the balls of the feet against the ground, and I want to feel the tendons in the foot you know, kind of engage and alert the muscles towards motion, but I don't do a big motion. But I want to feel that engagement and that pressure and even the tensing of the fascia, almost like I've taken a toothpaste tube and I've pointed it to the ceiling. I'm squeezing the bottom of the tube and the toothpaste is going to come out the top, right? I want to start a flow of energy, engagement coming up. So it really literally feels like I'm slow motion jumping, you know, <clears throat> pushing from the balls of the feet. You can see the slow motion jump, right, coming. That's the feeling, in a sense. But the, I think the toothpaste tube more accurate, see. So as I start in the foot and put the, I go through the knee. You must engage the back of the knee, even if you're sitting, right? Because the energy will flow there, and that's where it needs to flow from the ground through that area. If it gets stuck here, it's stuck, right? You know? So make it flow through there. Now, as you get to the chair and you're tucking tailbone, you feel the hip area, again, kind of engage and, and open up and alert itself to motion, to flow. And the tucking of the tailbone is automatically now, see, and the tucking of the tailbone almost like a gear, that is leveraging up my arms to some extent from inside, greatly reducing the amount of muscle. It's a pressure rising up through the spine and the body. And I let, I let it come to the top of the head. I personally kind of feel like it's more like you, you lengthen up through the spine and then the arms come. Again, different schools of thought, I think they come here and flow out and continue to the head at the same time. It's not, you play with it, right? Play with it. Yeah. But for, I'll tell you from experience doing the fighting, when I had a good center line, in other words, I was in the ground and I lengthened up through the top of the head, then what I did with my arms had this central power hooked to the ground. But if I came up to the arms and didn't finish flowing up through the neck and head, right, this way, then the action of the arms was not good and it, I could be overcome and I'd be pushed out, you see? But when I had this first, I mean, it's, uh, I was unstoppable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, what can I tell you? And here's the beauty of, see, training in the fighting is, you know, try to flow up just to the arm and get pushed out, right? Flow through the entire structure and then use the arms hinge there and push everybody else out. Uh, I can tell you which way is better. <clears throat> so lengthen to the top and then feel this almost like, once it gets to the top, overflowing out the arm and coming out. But you got to watch out for no feelings of power. It's just more like a, a balloon being filled with water. So my shape is morphing, and I'm pushing from the ground, and I'm lengthening all the way through the body. And this arm coming out, chest coming in, is leveraging, pulling in, 
And this is where we start feeling the effect of the arm into the body, right? You feel it? Yes or no? Okay, good. Now, as I move my elbow forward, my elbow's here, see it's pointing down. I'm actually literally going to move it forward, which means I have to sink my chest more and let the shoulder blades separate more without pulling the shoulders up, all right? So you can feel a deeper degree of pulling into the body. And you get to such a fine edge that just by extending your hands, you feel it increase, all right? Now we're going to flip that hamburger. So when I start to fold at the wrist, I leave my wrist right where it is in space because that's that pulling all through the body. I don't want to let that go. But this changes the pressure now into a, it reverses. It comes into a downward pressure through the top of the head and it's descending, contracting, kind of squeezing down through the body back where it came from, right? And if I do it this way, if I come from here and take care to length, you know, wrap nice and lengthen through the body and then add this other 5%, when I do this, the pressure comes in and goes down and it kind of hits a little roadblock almost right here. It feels like it comes in and kind of hits something between here and here. Almost like water coming and hitting a rock, you know, from a waterfall. Like, and that's going to keep going, but you absolutely feel something change it here. Right, right? That's where I slightly tuck the tailbone, slightly bend the knee, and that causes the elbow to bend, see? And I just keep letting it go down, down, and this moving of the arms now, it went past that point, and it's descending again into the belly, to the ground. Right? Good. So it's almost like you took a rolling pin to start, and you... You went all the way up, and then you take the, and then you reverse the rolling pin, and you come all the way down, right? Wow! I wish you could see when I when I did it right now, my energy rolled through so big that all the hair, all the goosebumps, right? You can probably feel it watching it. You can see it when it happens, and, and that's the feeling like a wave on the beach. You coming up and then going. So I just want you to um, practice that. Yes, we looked at this, you know, and this, but uh, same kind of idea. By going a little slower, a little higher quality, you'll go further and faster that way than by looking at all of it in a crappy manner. You follow me? That's the bottom line. I'm not even asking you. I'm saying that's the way it is. And fortunately, there's no choice for anybody in my school because it's all high quality. Amen. Pass the potatoes, right? That's it. So, bingo. So here we go. So just practice that, right? And, and what I want you to do, you know, when you decide to practice, just make sure you do at least four, you know, iterations, which we'll do together before we leave. And then, of course... No more than 20, right? So somewhere in that zone. <laughs> Something for everyone, right? Uh, you, you can, we got all the different sizes you need. So let's do four together. And, and if there's no questions, let's just do it, you know. All right, good. Begin at the feet. And you're just... Bringing it to life, rolling it out, waking it up, pressurizing. A little more. Flip it. Yeah. Good. Again. Just the slightest bend in the knee, you can see I'm not really folding at the waist or just big knee bend. It's just the same way dough would behave. You just feel the pressure coming through. Hey. And one more. All right. 
Looked okay. It looked okay. A any any glitches? You got the sequence? I think I think so. Fantastic, fantastic. So now this is uh they tell me it's Wednesday. I'm gonna take your word for it. Uh <laughs> So don't go nuts. Do what you you normally been doing with your basic eight, and then just you know get in at least one session, if not two, between now and Saturday, and just tell me your experience with it. We'll definitely do that part again. And if there were no big glitches, you feel all right. We'll add. We'll we'll sneak back through uh, move number two as well. Looking good. You're back on track. Keep it going. Don't give up. Keep it going. Good job.